the code in the class name prob0 for my class defines a concrete version of the get data method which can be executed. As a result, it is not necessary to declare the class name prob0 for my class as abstract. This makes it possible to instantiate an object of the class name prob0 for my class. Now, the overridden version of the get data method that you see on the bottom right of your screen returns a copy of the value stored in the private instance variable named data. So although the behavior of the overridden get data method is very simple, it is concrete and it can be executed and it satisfies the requirement that an inherited abstract method must be defined in concrete form in order to prevent the requirement to declare the class as abstract. Later on, when we get back to the main method in the driver class named prob04, we will see that the overridden get data method is called in the main method. Here's your next question. What class is a superclass of every other class? The answer is that the ultimate superclass of every class is the predefined system class whose name is object. The class named object defines 11 methods each with default behavior including a method whose name is toString. Those 11 methods including the method named toString are inherited into every class that can be defined in a Java program. Listing 4 on the bottom right of your screen overrides the inherited toString method. It's important to understand that a method does not need to be abstract to be overridden, but every abstract method must be overridden. In fact, in Java, any method may be overridden in a subclass provided that it is not declared to be final in the class in which it is first defined. The toString method as defined in the object class has default behavior which isn't very interesting. If you define a class and override the inherited toString method when you define that class, you will change the behavior of the toString method from its default behavior to your newly defined behavior for objects of the class in which you override the toString method. Overriding the toString method in the code on the bottom right of your screen changes the behavior of that method insofar as objects of the class named prob04 my class are concerned. 
Here is another question for you. What is the default behavior of the toString method that is defined in the class named object? I will answer that question with an example. If the toString method had not been overridden in the class name prob04 my class, then calling the toString method on an object instantiated from that class would return a string similar to that shown here. An illustration of the default behavior of the toString method as defined in the object class is shown on the right side of your screen. In particular, the default behavior is to return a string that begins with the name of the class from which the object was instantiated followed by an at character followed in turn by six hexadecimal digits. For this program, only the six hexadecimal digits at the end would change from one run to the next if the toString method had not been overridden. For example, if the toString method had not been overridden in the class name prob04 my class, the output produced by the program on the command line screen would be similar to that shown in the upper right of your screen as opposed to the required output in the lower right of your screen. If you compare the output shown here with the output shown here, you will see that the difference results from the fact that the overridden version of the toString method shown here returns Baldwin as a string instead of returning the default string shown here. The code in the upper right of your screen signals the end of the class definition for the class whose name is prob04 my class. Therefore, it is time for us to return to the explanation of the driver class that's shown in the bottom right of your screen. When we put the driver class aside earlier, we had just noted that the driver class instantiates a new object of the class named prob04 my class passing a pseudo random number as a parameter to the constructor that constructor returns a reference to the new object which is saved in the reference variable named obj ref that I just highlighted on the right of your screen. The next statement in the code on the right of your screen calls the print line method passing the contents of the variable named obj ref as a parameter to the print line method. In effect, this causes the object's reference to be passed to the print line method.